How's it going everybody? My name is Gene Villanos and today is a new segment and perhaps a new series for the PPC Cave and it is about Google Ads news. So in these segments and episodes, I'll go through and discuss a little bit about what's going on in the Google PPC, Google Ads landscape. As we all know, being a Google Ads PPC manager requires a lot of being in the know and continually being updated because it's an ever-changing landscape with all things digital marketing, especially Google Ads. So Google, we know, is one of the most innovative companies. So there's a lot rolling out and there's a hodgepodge of different things that are always going on that we need to be aware of. So for now, I'll go through a little bit of the points, but before I do so, you could see for anyone that is watching, now you could see us on video, both on YouTube and Spotify. You can see my attire. I'm dressed up to try to be a little bit of a news anchor. I have my nice watch and my polo. Um, so it's definitely a far cry from what I usually wear whenever I'm just comfortable recording with Ryan. Ryan can't be with us today, but I'm sure he'll do one of these segments in the future. So to begin, today is August 17th this is the time that i recorded it and i can promise you there's going to be a lot more changes so i'll put the date in the description for these episodes so you'll know which is the most recent and the most relevant so number one this happened about a couple months back i would say perhaps late june early july the whole privacy sandbox cookies third parties cookie third party cookies um saga right i think this came out a couple years back especially when facebook or meta now is kind of been under fire with data privacy and all those things they've done a couple of things through the iphone ios where the targeting and the data is just a little bit more opaque and google is trying to follow suit with cookies and for the most part we've heard about the privacy sandbox initiative where the main focus was to completely replace third party cookies because we've heard the word cookies and cookies has became something that's um, <clears throat> negative, excuse me. So this is fairly recent news where instead of doing away fully with cookies, Google's pivot now is depreciating cookies. So I have no idea how they're going to do this and it's been delayed for so long and I think initially they wanted to fully phase out of cookies end of 2024 but at this point there's no way I don't see that being an accurate time frame for that to even happen but they want to utilize new tools within their you know proprietary privacy sandbox that Google has designed to you know, basically maintain the functionality of uh, personalizing ads while respecting user security and privacy. I don't know how those two go together, but at this point in time in 2024, you're either gonna be all for understanding that you want targeted ads or targeted experience online shopping or even just searching versus someone that is totally anti giving data to these companies or whatever it may be and you know you don't want any part of that you're there's only two schools of thought you're really super for privacy online or you're perhaps an advertiser like me that may not be super for it but understand that i've been on the internet since zanga myspace friendster and i've had the same name you know ever since and my phone number is everywhere online everyone's data is online already there's there's, there's that school of thought where it's like what really can they do to limit basically restricting privacy or data usage for uh users that advertisers won't have access to that they haven't had access to in the last 10 20 years of google ads being around so you know i think it's more so google saving face this is a huge conglomerate and a lot of money and a lot of people are out at stake here maybe i shouldn't be saying these things because the matrix will come get me but you know privacy sandbox advancements with the third party cookies being phased out and you know if you're listening to this on spotify and not not actually watching phase that i'm putting in quotes because 
I have a feeling that cookies is just going to stay around, like they said, and it's going to be depreciated. But to what extent or what level, I have no idea. So uh, this is something to be aware of. If you're a super data privacy cookies, uh, privacy sandbox nerd, this is something you could go into a rabbit hole on and do more research. So secondly, this happened two months ago also was the 2024 Google Marketing Live event, which Google hosts every year, where they basically just go and tell us all the initiatives that's going on with Google as of late and what they're rolling out in the future. I think this is super important if you're, uh, you know, in Google Ads specifically, because a lot of this does pertain to what's going on in the future and just kind of what the landscape is going to be. We all know that Performance Max was rolled out a couple years back. And now a big portion of this Google Marketing Live that happened two months ago was including generative AI in Performance Max campaigns where essentially you as the marketer or advertiser don't have to write copy anymore. And you could provide a sentence that describes the offering of the website that you're working with and it'll continue to spit out headlines, descriptions, and even images through generative AI, through, the, through Google's engine, AI engine, Gemini. So that's, you know, something important. Um, for me, I have used this or I have tried. I, I think chat GPT is leaps and bounds, <clears throat> excuse me, um, ahead of Gemini and ad creation, you know, just anything that has to do with Google ads, even disseminating information through, you know, the spreadsheets and the data that you could download on Google ads. I personally use a software. I'm not going to name them because they haven't given us a brand sponsor yet. That software will not be named that I use for Google Ads and all my clients that heavily rely on ChatGPT specifically. ChatGPT, I'll never get a brand sponsorship for. So that's okay. It's just like basically Google, using Google. ChatGPT is going to be as big as Google one day. That's one thing that I, I know for sure. So if you are a marketer, uh, you could look into more of the Google Marketing Live. I think it is on Google Ads' YouTube channel, Google's YouTube channel, where they have a bit of a seven-minute snippet of what basically transpired because I think it's an over an hour long event. I don't have time for that. So I, you know, I need to get the concise uh, tabs or notes for that. So that's one thing, really integrating Performance Max and pushing Performance Max. I think they call it the power pair, where they had a specific segment just on Google Marketing Live that discussed how great Performance Max is, uh, you know, that it needs to be paired with search where we know that is best practice, but it's just really funny. Not funny. It's expected to see how Google in general is pivoting to not only uh, performance max as a campaign but adding tools and arsenal to use performance max for the daily business owner that doesn't understand maybe the platform or how google ads works all you have to do if i'm a google rep is say hey turn on performance max go to the generative ai section powered by gemini type in your offering if you're a plumber if you sell shoes if you sell baskets whatever it may be it'll mock up a headline mock up a description click save and set a budget and you're good to go. For me, that is a little scary because their Google ads is not that easy. If you did it that way, you would spend a lot of money not gaining any return or any conversions or anything valuable. Um, and that's my strong opinion. And I, I believe a lot of Google ads and advertise Google ads managers and advertisers still believe uh, in the human touch, despite of all the generative AI and pushing Gemini and pushing Performance Max, all these automated algorithmic uh, ways to create ads for people, it just doesn't have the same focus and the same, I would say, outcome uh, as someone that's actually trained and has experience as a Google Ads PPC manager like me and Ryan. And we're always available, genevillanos.com. You can find Ryan at Ryan Fenton. Ryan Fenton PPC UK CO. It's it's it going to be in the description. I have no idea why the, the United Kingdom has such a I'll not get in. I don't want to get into it. But anyway, it's such a long URL. But anyway, <laughs> so generative AI with performance max um, and search. 
and also a product studio. This is something on Google Merchant Center. If you haven't upgraded to Google Merchant Center next, you could take a look uh, here shortly. I'll go into that a little bit, but it's in Google Merchant Center where you can create more assets, image assets, even video assets for your Performance Max or any Google Ads campaigns that you have through generative AI. You could provide a prompt, you could provide a photo, you could change the background, you can make it uniform. Product Studio, Studio is actually a cool feature that I need to definitely use more <clears throat> because gone are the days where you, you're going to get on Canva and create make a creative just because you know a lot of these offerings or accounts that I manage on Google have so many photos. So it's it's nice to just have something built in on Google Merchant Center that could be pushed to your shopping or any perform, uh, product, product listing ads like such a, such as Performance Max or shopping ads that could have a different background and kind of stand out. A lot of the issues that third-party dropshippers um, have is you're using the same stock photo from from the supplier. So you're using the same stock stock photo on the from the supplier on Google Shopping. There's 30 different competitors on Google Shopping side by side. Some of it is the same photos as you. One good way to differentiate yourself, even from a very minuscule, uh, small way, is just having a different background photo on your product listing ad on Google Shopping, and you could achieve that with Product Studio. So that's another thing with. Uh, Google Marketing Live that they kind of went over a little bit more. Oh, and I actually have a little bit of a background here. Um, getting a little spicy with it as I go ahead and do my video settings and show you my background of what actually transpired with um, what do you call it? Google Marketing Live. They have this little photo, as you can see, it's behind me now. Um, stickers, P. Stickers, Pmax Creative, Measurement Diagnostics, Google Ads Manager, Product Studio right here. I'll move it. Look alike segment. So there's all these different things, ads and AI overviews. And uh, you know, th there's a lot of these different things that are going to be very helpful uh, to advertisers and marketers like us, just because it's going to provide uh, a level of being hands-off when it comes to daily or monotonous mundane routine task that we need to do if it be a uh, quick data analysis generate generated insights and reports you could talk to gemini itself and be like hey spit something out in the last two or three months regarding this performance mass campaign what does the click-through rate look like you know instead of going through going to the campaigns setting your time frame day you know, jotting or making a, a mental photo or or picture of what the CTR was for that week versus the last week versus the last month versus the last year. You can do all that through through uh, the AI. Uh, you know, segment will be on I think on the right hand side of the platform. So yeah, that's these are pretty good things that Google Marketing Live talked about in the last couple of months. 3D shopping ads. This is another way that is uh, another wave that's going to come soon. I think a couple of years back, a lot of us advertisers, marketers, and and PPC managers thought that search through voice was going to be the biggest thing with the upcoming Alexa, Google Voice Home, all those things. We're like Siri. We're like, oh, voice search is going to be the next thing. I remember that being the it factor or the buzzword in 2017 to, or 2015 to 2018, perhaps. So then now it's, you know, AI full on. So with the 3D shopping ads, I heard that it's going to show on the actual shopping uh, list, Google shopping list of sponsored ads on the top of your results page. And it's going to basically start with shoes first shoes is going to be the first uh iteration of it and you could scroll and actually see a 360 view of the shoe itself so i think that's cool a lot of the times that 2d photo you know is a bit played out if we have the tools and the bandwidth to provide that type of uh extra layer you know of shopping ads going into 3d where you could drag and look around the whole product Perhaps that moves on to different offerings also, not just shoes, but I think during Google Marketing Live, they mentioned it'll just be shoes in the upcoming future. And then um, 
you know, with studio, making sure that your creatives are on point, you know, uh, their whole, you know, arc or journey or vision is they want to be able to provide AI solutions on the creative side, on the media side, and on the measurement side. So the creative side is your headlines and descriptions. You could use AI tools for that. Media is what it sounds like, your videos and your, your image assets. And measurement, as I pointed out before, what is the click-through rate in the last two or three months for Performance Max, GV, you know, that's what I call my campaigns, uh, catch-all campaign. So from those three buckets of both creative media and measurement being the vision for AI, it's like what they're, they're basically saying, if you if you as a normal person or a business owner um, can't do this, then, you know, we're really making it as simple as possible. You don't have to be a Google ads manager. So Google ads, this is my, this is my two cents. This isn't, this isn't part of the script. I'm going totally off script. So Google ads in the last 20 years since inception, the genesis of it was tailored to only Google Ads, PPC managers that are very technical, that understand the platform, that understand some of the coding, some of how the internet works, a little bit of SEO, a little bit of, you know, uh, media marketing with design and, and copy and advertisement. So you have to kind of be in this bucket, you know, to be even uh, adequate or competent enough to have a Google Ads campaign that works. So moving away from that, getting away from manual, going from manual shopping that I'm sure will be extinct, extinct in the next couple years to more automated, letting Google make the decisions, recommendations, optimization score. All of these things are in hopes to shift the bucket from just Google ads, PPC advertisers that are very tech savvy to the mom and pa business or the mom that's making you know, kitten mitts in Iowa, you know, that offering, that person, that business owner that's ma making mittens or gloves for, for cats that is maybe a little bit older, that has no idea about being tech savvy, about Google ads or anything like that, can use these features of Performance Max, of Gemini, of Pmax Creative, so that, you know, they could create the ad, create the media, and measure it without having to know anything technical that goes beyond service level. So I think that's, you know, a smart move for Google in general, just because they're always looking to innovate and capture new market share. So I think that's the play there. Um, yeah, so Gemini models, even with search, not just performance max, I think a lot of this is pretty obvious and we could, you know, basically just uh, move on. But another thing that I wanted to discuss was their Google Lens. So if you haven't looked at Google Lens yet, you should uh, just type in Google Google Lens, and it's a whole other URL, other domain where you take you can take photos of your surroundings, and it could show up exactly through Google's results page what you're searching for. So what that means is, if I was to take a photo of a pair of Adidas Sambas, it'll basically, you know, recognize it through my phone and on the app or on, I think uh, on desktop also, but it'll show the results. And now moving forward, it'll show Google shopping results. So this is a new way for uh, all of this to kind of speak together to say, hey, a lot of people don't even want to type it out anymore. They just want to show a photo. What can you do as an advertiser, you know, moving into the future to make sure that your product or your offering is on that Google shopping list? Um, so that's another thing that they'll be testing out here shortly, um, you know, just for the U.S. And yeah, a lot of that is basically old news at this point, but I think it's good to have a little bit of a baseline of, um, you know, what the Google marketing live kind of went over and, you know, just kind of going through that and figuring that out. So got rid of the background moving on. Third is Google merchant next. So Google ads says, Oh, Google says in September, 2024, I would say the end of September, 2024, that Google merchant next will be 
live on all current Google Merchant accounts. So I've seen this now. I've upgraded a lot of my accounts to Google Merchant Center Next just because it is pretty, you know, it, it, it does have a new interface, you know, a new interface, more simplistic. And for me, I like it. I think they really make it easy, easy specifically to filter uh, through products. You know, there's a lot of things that you could just do through filtering products and editing, editing specific attributes for specific products. Instead of going through and creating a supplemental feed or feed rule, you could just kind of go directly into it by the filters that they've created through your products tab on the left. So I think it is a good change. Again, I think this is all a ploy to, not a ploy, but this is just all a way for Google to say we're upgrading the platforms and and the user experience. So not only these tech savvy people or just a small niche of Google Ads PPC managers can go in and explore and figure out and click around and, and use it effectively, but someone that, like I said, no offense to anyone that actually makes gloves for cats, but I, I was just trying to make the most obscure example as possible. And, you know, even someone like that uh, as a business owner could go through and understand the platform and Google Merchant Center. So that's happening end of September, 2024. Again, it is August 17th. What are we at? August 17th. Um, and in on August 30th, so you have about two weeks, the old Google ads interface is going away. So on brand with what Google has been doing as of late, it's become more simple. They say, I, I can see that it is a little bit more simple for someone that doesn't understand the Google ads interface or hasn't used it, you know, years and years and years. I think anyone coming in that's brand new that will look at the old interface versus the new one. I think they'll be, you know, very pleased with the new uh, cleaner layout. It's the tabs are all on the left. So there's uh, sub tabs also that you could look at and they just kind of expand and collapse. So I think that is good. Um, and that's going to be phased out August 30th, 2024. Another, the last point of our Google Ads, our first Google Ads news segment series episode is invoicing. I've only seen this with, I would say, one big account that I have that I manage. Excuse me. But what they're doing now is switching since July 31st, 2024, Google Ads is... Uh, I think they're losing money here. I think uh, Google is losing money here that people are actually using credit cards to pay for um, their invoices. And some of these invoices, as you know, or these uh, Google ads cost or your budget, essentially, it can get really, really expensive, you know? So I understand it. So they're looking to switch now for for at least just now the big spenders or big accounts from uh you know back then they could do debit or credit card payments but you know as you know there's processing fees and transaction fees for that so they're only looking to do direct debit you know direct debit through an invoice which i believe you could sign up through like a direct deposit ach wire or a specific checking account so this is going to be you know Something that some people need to really pay attention to. Uh, I don't want to alarm anyone. If you haven't gotten this, they usually show up on the homepage. It'll say like, oh, you need to fix your, you know, your billing or something like that. It'll be in red. So if you haven't gotten that, don't worry about it. I'm not trying to alarm anybody. The, this Google says this is only for big accounts or accounts. I, they didn't really say big accounts, but I think they, they, the wording was like, accounts that i don't know high growth high growth that's such a google thing not big spender high growth account so if you're a high growth account i have one that we switched over um what are my clients that needed to do this so uh just be aware and you know google google's this was like the biggest loophole in my opinion if you're a business owner just to go off on a tangent here, if you have a business owner, you get an Amex or a Chase business card or something, and you put in, you know, all your spend, it could be $50,000 of monthly Google ads spend on that credit card, and you're getting 3x points, 5x points, two times cash back, and they take that away, you know, because Google ads is paying the transaction fees. I've told this to almost all my clients before, 
you know, that I onboard. And that's what you get with me. You know, I'm trying to give you the most cost effective way to do Google ads. I tell all my clients in the US, this isn't tax. This is not tax advice, but I am a write off. Any management fee, any Google ads budget is an advertisement write off in the US. This is not tax advice or financial advice. Just look it up. Uh, talk to your CPA first. Talk, your, talk to your accountant. But, you know, I do this. Advertisement is a write-off for a business, small business, whatever it may be. But again, I am not a financial expert. I am not an accountant. This is not financial advice. All right. Um, but yeah, they're going to get rid of that. So beware if this is a high growth account that you're working on, it'll show on the homepage and you'll be provided emails. But if you're not, um, don't worry about, worry about it for now. You're good to go. So yeah, that's it for our news segment, our news series, where I would probably do this every quarter because I think there's a lot of changes going on, a lot of things to discuss, as always, in the Google Ads PPC landscape. If you enjoy this type of episode and it provides you value, um, you know, give us a like. I think we're pretty high on YouTube now with subscribers. Um, I think we're at over 100, so that's awesome. Keep at it. We release every Monday. Doesn't matter if we're on vacation. Doesn't matter if it's just me or whatever, just Ryan. We release every Monday, 12 a.m. Mountain Time, Apple Podcasts. Spotify podcast and video and YouTube. Subscribe to us there. And if you have any questions about regular Google Ads management, whatever it may be, email us, theppccave at gmail.com. You could find me on my website, genevillanos.com and Ryan Fenton PPC dot uk dot co. I think that's the I'll put it in description. I think I got that right that time. But if there's nothing else, I'll talk to y'all next time. Bye for now. <laughs>